am so glad you joined me. Today we're going to be looking at dissociation reactions of acids and bases. Now, acids and bases dissociate into ions, your cation and your anion, just like ionic compounds do. So if you've done these reactions with ionic compounds, there's a similarity here. So if we have a strong acid or base, that dissociation is considered to be 100% or that they completely dissociate. And we show that with a one-way arrow going forward. That implies that these proceed 100% to form product. Um, just as an aside, that means that these calculations are stoichiometric calculations. Weak acids and bases only partially dissociate. They dissociate less than 100%, and so we'll use a double arrow, either two half arrows or two whole arrows. You see it a variety of ways. Okay, they don't form as many ions because they don't go um, as far to form product. In the reactant stage, they stay molecular, which they don't form ions. So we will talk about that in terms of their acid base strength as we move through this series of videos. Now, how do we know? I get this question all the time. How do you know whether we have a strong acid or a strong base? Well, the short answer is you memorize. So this is a list of most of the strong acids for AP, IB, 10th grade chemistry. This is typically a, a list that's good enough. Um, there's another way that we will find that you can determine whether uh, the problem is dealing with it, an acid is being weak or strong, or a base is being weak or strong, is they will give you a constant called Ka for acids or Kb for bases. And that's going to be for those that dissociate less than 100%. Now, to memorize these, uh, there's, you know, not... I haven't really come up with a good trick, um, but we can merge this with some ways we already memorize some substances. So I have my kids memorize diatomics as I bring clay for our new house. So we can look at this as I bring clay. So I bring clay. And so HI, HBr, HCl are all weak. Now, or strong, excuse me, they're all strong. Now, the polyatomic ions here are nitrate, sulfate, chlorate, and perchlorate. And so the way I have my kids memorize that is through a phrase about Nick and a camel and eating supper in Phoenix. It's a little wild, but I think it's genius. So you can memorize these as Nick for nitrate, supper for sulfate. So Nick has three consonants, so there's three vowels and one, or excuse me, three oxygens. So there's three oxygens, there's one vowel, so there's one charge. Supper is sulfate, one, two, three, four, four oxygens, two vowels, tells me its charge is two minus. So clam is chlorate, and then we can do clams for perchlorate. So I bring clay, Nick supper clam clams. So if you want something to memorize, that might help you out or come up with something more creative. So that has helped a few of my kiddos. For strong bases, usually, and there's, you know, you'll see a few different lists on these, but the typical list is going to be all of your hydroxides for group one and group two metals, except beryllium hydroxide, and then magnesium hydroxide, you'll see on some lists and not on others. I consider these two to be weak. So all group one and group two hydroxides, except beryllium and magnesium, are strong. How do you know that? You have to memorize that. Okay. Strong acids and bases, since they go 100% to make ions, they are strong conductors of electricity. We would call them strong electrolytes. 
Weak acids and bases are weak conductors. That's because they stay in their molecular form at least part. So they don't go 100% to form ions. Some stay in the molecular part. You need the ions to facilitate flow of electrons. So these are considered weak electrolytes. in terms of having a weak ability to conduct electricity in their aqueous solutions. Now, what we're going to do next is show how we write these as dissociation reactions. If you are dealing with weak bases, you must, you must, you must show water in the dissociation. Honestly, if you're dealing with strong bases, don't show water or you'll get confused. All else, it, it really depends. You'll see it both ways, and you need to be familiar with both ways of doing this. So let me show you some examples, and, and hopefully that will help clear up what I'm saying. So I have HClO3. I'm going to add water. HClO3 is strong, so I'm going to use a single arrow. HClO3 is an acid, so it's going to donate water to water, which is acting as a base in this reaction. Excuse me, it's going to donate to water. So I end up with ClO3 minus plus H3O plus that hydronium ion. So that's the official way to write it, and I'm trying to learn to write it that way all the time. I'm kind of older and tend to get set in your ways. But you will commonly see this as HClO3 just throwing off that H+. I'm really beginning to prefer the one with water, so I'm going to show that. Now, this is phosphoric acid. It has three H pluses and it's weak. Every one of them is weak. We are going to only show one at a time. So we're going to show one H plus. So I've lost one of the H's, so that's a two. I've lost a plus charge. It was neutral, so it's now minus. Water gained, so it had two hydrogens. Now it has three. It gained an H and a plus charge. So that's how you would write that one for acetic acid. Now be careful. In acetic acid, only that first H plus is what we would call acidic. These other H's are bonded to carbon and they don't come off. So only one will come off. It's not one of our strong that we've memorized, so it's weak. I'm going to end up with the acetate ion. I'm losing that H in the front and a plus charge. Water's gaining an H and a plus charge. So that's how you would write those acid dissociation or reactions really with water. Okay, let's look at a couple of bases. Now this is a strong base. Don't show water. Honestly, it is so confusing if you try to show water with the hydroxides. So just dissociate those. It's strong. I'm going to dissociate both of those OH minuses. So be careful there. This is aniline. Do you notice that it's got this nitrogen here? So um, if you have substances that center on nitrogen. So these substances would have three different possible things associated with them. If these are all hydrogens, you have ammonia. Okay. But substances that center on nitrogen with that non-bonded pair of electrons are weak bases. You must show water because you need something from which to take the H and the plus. Since it's weak, it's a double arrow. So I had C6H5N, and I did have two, but it's gaining an H and a plus from the water, so I now have three and a plus charge. 
Now since water lost an H and a plus, I'm going to end up with a hydroxide ion. You may be tempted to write it like this. Don't give in to that temptation. It's not how chemists write hydroxides. Here's another one, trimethylamine. You don't have to know typically how to name those if you're at what I call a level one or 10th grade level. If you're an IB, you would need to be familiar with these. So this is tetramethylamine. Again, it's nitrogen with three groups hanging on it. So I'm going to add water. Remember, this centers on the nitrogen. It's weak. I'm going to add that H right by the nitrogen. I'm going to put it in a different color so you can see that I'm adding that H by the nitrogen with its plus charge. Since water lost an H and a plus, it becomes hydroxide or OH minus. Okay, throughout this unit, you should be getting quite a bit of practice on writing these. And I hope this introduction helped. Thanks for joining me. Take care.